Welcome dear listener, it is 8th Sunday in the Ordinary Time. My name is Father Gerald from the Contemplative Evangelizers of the Heart of Christ. Name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The readings of this Sunday, the first reading, the book of Sirach, chapter 27, verse 4 to 7. The responsorial psalm, Psalm 92, verse 2 to 3, 13 to 14, 15 to 16. Second reading, 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 54 to 58. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 6, Verse 39 to 45. The Gospel. He also told them a parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he fully taught, will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck in your brother's eye, but you do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye, you hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble brush. The good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, produces good, and the evil man, out of his own treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Dear listener, the Holy Gospel of the Lord. In meditating the word of the Lord this beautiful Sunday, in the first reading, Joshua ben Sirach began a wisdom school in Jerusalem around the time of the second century before the coming of Christ for the instruction of young men in the law of Moses. The book of Sirach, in other words, Ecclesiasticus, some 50 years later, ben Sirach's grandson, who had taken a Hebrew manuscript from his grandfather's work to Egypt, translated it into Greek. The Latin title Ecclesiasticus meant church book. So dear listener, it received this title from the fact that after the Psalms, it was the book most used in the liturgy. In fact, in the early church, it was a kind of official catechism used in the catechumenate. This book played an important part in shaping the faith of the Jewish people. He advises everyone to live in accordance with the divine law, which should be the highest rule and main aspiration of man's behavior. So in today's quotation, speech is the principal criterion for evaluating a person. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do a man's fault when he speaks. After the grain is threshed, it is placed in a sieve. The refuse, including the straw, the husks, and the dung, remains behind. In the second reading, dear listener, we hear Paul end his discussion of the resurrection of the dead with a hymn of triumph over death. St. Paul suggests that the law gave sin its power by giving a knowledge of God's commandments and threatening death to a sinner without giving the poor man the strength to keep them. If you read Romans chapter 7, verse 7 to 25. 
he sums up well that we are called to be steady first and persevering, fully engaged in the work of the Lord. You know that your toil is not in vain when it is done in the Lord. Dear listener, in the gospel of today, the gospel is addressed to Jesus' followers, whom he considers to be the eventual leaders and teachers in his church. We complete a teaching which was begun two weeks ago, the Sermon on the Plain. We began with the Beatitudes and Curses. And last week we heard that we are to love our enemies. This week we hear Jesus teaching on uprightness of heart. Dear listener, the Greek philosopher Socrates tells us that self-knowledge is the beginning of wisdom, as it was echoed by Sirach in the first reading. Few of us are truly wise in this respect. We are so focused on the faults of others, those with whom we work, and those for whom we work, the members of our community, our family, our leaders, and others, that we have little time or energy for the fundamental and important exercise of all. Truly, dear listener, looking at ourselves and correcting our own faults. Jesus says, discipleship asks us to produce good deeds. But to produce them requires the integrity and purity of heart found in the teacher. When people see your good deeds, they will know that this is because you have a good heart. The gospel challenges us to have a clear vision and to bear good fruit for the deepening of our adherence to Christ and to be sound teachers, even if it is in small and hidden ways. Dear listener, Jesus indicated that good people produce goodness which flows from their hearts. We speak from what is in our deepest self. Good teaching comes from actions than words. Dear listener, at our passing, people may not remember any of the words we spoke to them, but they will remember how we made them feel, either accepted or rejected. I want to wish you a blessed Sunday. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.